In this video, we're going to do a quick recap of what piecewise functions are. Um, so first, we need to make sure we understand the word interval. This means like a, a period of time. In this case, we're looking at graphs, so it's like a space on the x-axis. Um, it's a set. Um, there's an infinite amount in there, and your interval can show your boundaries. Um, so we have two types of notations. We can see interval notation, which we've talked about already. Um, another way to see this, and this is usually how they're written in piecewise functions, is with inequalities. Um, so we're going to use these to specify what part of the graph are we looking at. And that's all a piecewise function is. It's two graphs. We're looking at two pieces of two different graphs. So example one. Here first we're going to graph y equals 2x minus 3. So we have a y-intercept of negative 3. Our slope is 2. And the graph will go in that direction. Um, now, if we took that line and we restrict the domain to only looking at values that are greater than 1. Um, so we don't want to look at 1 itself. And we're looking at x, by the way. So when x just means we're going to look at these values here. We want to look at 1. And we don't want those, uh, sorry, we don't want to include 1. And we want to look at everything bigger. So in this case, we're only going to look at that portion of the graph. We're not looking at 1. And we're looking at everything greater. So that's a piece. The next here in green, we're going to graph y equals x squared. So y equals x squared is a parabola. Um, it's going to look similar to this. And that's the graph of y equals x squared. Now we only want to look at that portion of the graph from 1 and less. Um, so x equals 1 is going to be here but we don't want to look at any values larger than that. Um, let me get a small eraser here. And now we've just created a piecewise function. So we're looking at part of the green and part of the purple. And the way we write this uh, looks like this. So you can see here we have the purple function. So y equals 2x minus 3, and we're only looking at values greater than 1. Then we have the green function. We have y equals x squared, and we're looking at 1 and, and less. Um, so we've just created a piecewise function. So now we're going to look at a um, slightly different uh, type of piecewise function. So first we're going to graph y equals x squared minus 1. So that's going to look kind of like this. And we want to restrict that to, to looking at every single value except right at 1. So we want to look above and below 1, but not directly at x equals 1. So we want to kind of make a hole there. Let me grab my purple. Okay, so that's the purple. Now the green, y equals 5, is a horizontal line that crosses right here at 5. And I only want to see that when x equals 1. So all I want to see is this point right here. I don't want to look at any of the rest of the line. So that's all we're doing is we're just we're restricting what we're actually looking at. So we're not going to see any of that. And so this is a different type of a piecewise function. Um, so again, here you can see we've created a hole. And here we kind of created a jump. We, it's kind of, we call this a jump when they're kind of far apart like that. Um, and so you can see the difference in the restrictions. Um, so again, we've created our piecewise function. This is what you'll see um, when they want you to look at this. So here's kind of a recap. We have two types of piecewise functions. First, we can restrict using inequalities. And that's what um, we did in the first one. We use these inequalities, greater than or less than. So that just means we're using one function until we get to a certain point. And then every value is smaller than that. We're using a totally different function. So we're kind of jumping from one function here to the next. Um, it possibly can create a jump. It is possible that this green line could have kind of lined up exactly with the purple. That's possible. So it possibly creates a jump. Um, if we look at the other type, which was this equals not equals, um, that could possibly create a hole. So here we're not jumping from one function to another. We're using this function everywhere except at one single point. Um, so we're using this function on both the left and the right, 
But then right at one, we're using this other function here that jumps way up there. Um, again, it is possible that this point just so happens to fill that gap in. Um, so again, it possibly creates a hole. So here are some examples. When we're finding limits, we're not always going to see the graph. So remember, the limit means x is approaching. It's not equal to. So we do not care what happens when x equals 3. And since here we have equals not equals, we're actually not concerned with this piece of the graph at all. We do not care what happens when x equals 3. We want to know what happens as we get really close from the left and really close from the right. And on a graph, as we're getting really close to 3 from the left, we're not equal to 3. And as we get really close from the right, we're also not equal to 3. So in both cases, we're only using this function. And since we're still finding limits, we're still trying direct substitution. It's just that we don't have to worry about this guy for our direct substitution. So all we do is take 3 and plug it into our top function. And if we simplify, 3 times 9, um, here we'll have minus 2, 27 minus 2 is 25. If we look at example 4, here, this is a one-sided limit. So here we're coming into 3 from the left. So as I approach 3 from the left, I'm using values here that are smaller than 3. So because this guy is in equals not equals, I need to make sure I'm using the function that's smaller than 3. And this top function is the one that we use for any x value smaller than 3. So I'm going to use direct substitution. I'm only plugging it into the top. So when I plug this in, I'll get 3 plus 2 over 2 or 5 over 2. This would be slightly different if this minus had not been there. Okay? If this would have said find the limits as x approaches 3, then we actually would have to do a little bit more work because we would need to make sure that the from the left... So we have to make sure the limits from the left and the limit from the right are equivalent. So if this was a two-sided limit, we would have to first find the limit as x approaches 3 from the left. Then we would have to make sure it's the same as the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. So now we would have to plug it into this bottom function. And if I plug in 3, I'll get 12 minus 6 over 3, which is 2. And because these are different here, I would have to say the limit does not exist. And again, that's if this were a two-sided limit. Um, as it's written, this was a one-sided limit from the left only. So my answer was 